Hey guys, it's Greg from BitGoblin again, and today we're going to take a look at how to create a sick but cheap media center with a Raspberry Pi and Libra LX. And then of course, because it's me, we're also going to tie it into my existing Jellyfin server so I have access to all of my media. This is actually a really easy thing to do, especially if you already have a little bit of experience with Raspberry Pis, or at least writing OS images to SD cards, since that's basically all you really need to do. So go grab your Pi, a micro SD card, and an SD card reader, and I will meet you on the other side. You smell that? It smells like a bit goblin. So, like I said in the intro, what we're doing today is we're going to install an OS called Libra Elec on a Raspberry Pi, and then we'll run through the installation and setup process, which will get us a working Kodi installation really easily. And then after that, we'll tie it into an existing Jellyfin server to get access to all of our content. A setup like this is not only really easy to install and configure, but it's also really cheap, being that a Raspberry Pi 4 with 1GB of RAM starts for around $35. What you'll need is the aforementioned Raspberry Pi along with the usual accessories. Here I have the Raspberry Pi 4 with 4GB of RAM, but one with less memory or even an older Pi version will do just fine. The RAM really isn't that important, the 4GB model is just what I have lying around, and I've done this before on Pi version 3s, which handled Kodi just fine, though they would chug a little bit when direct playing higher resolution and bitrate content. With the Pi, I have a micro SD card, as you can see in there. You really don't need a large one, 32 gigabytes is fine and pretty cheap. The one I have right here is 128 gigabytes. Again, this is just what I have on hand. You'll also need a power supply for the Pi, an ethernet cable if you don't want to use Wi-Fi, and preferably a case to protect it. This is the uh, Flirk Flirk Kodi Edition case, which is kind of slick in my opinion. I've also got this Logitech K400 Plus keyboard and trackpad combo, which is great for uses like this, where you really don't need a great typing or mousing experience. You really just need something cheap and easy to manage while sitting on the couch and browsing movies or whatever. I think I got this for something around like $40 on Amazon. So I'll leave a link to that Amazon listing down below in the video description if you're interested. To get started, go to https colon slash slash in your browser. Go to the download page and select to download the SD card creator tool for your operating system. I'm grabbing the Windows executable since I'm on Windows 10. Apparently they stupidly host the tool over an HTTP connection, so you may be prompted to accept the insecure download. But anyways, once that's done, open up the tool and you'll see a window like this with several options. The first option you'll need to select is which device you are using this image on. I'm using a Pi 4, so I'm sticking with that. Next, we select the version of Libra Elec to use. The only option here is 10.0.0, and it's the current version anyway, so that's good. Now we need to download the image that we selected by clicking the download button and giving it a spot to put the image. I'm just going to put this here in my downloads directory, easy enough. Afterwards, the image will download and you'll see the file path field below this fill out. Note that if you already have an image downloaded, you can click select file instead of downloading a new one so you don't have to download a new image every single time if you have a slow connection. Now we just need to select our SD card device, of which mine was auto selected, and then just click write. You'll get prompted that your card will be erased. Just click yes and the writing will commence. Once that's done, you can eject your card and put it in your Pi. Now you need to get your Pi connected up to your TV with a keyboard and mouse and possibly an ethernet cable, and then just power it on. It'll take a second to expand the file system on your SD card and boot up. Don't be scared of all the text flying around the screen or the rainbow screens. Those are completely normal. After it boots, Kodi should launch and you should see a screen just like this. The first time setup process for this is actually pretty straightforward. You basically just go through several menus, setting things like your system language, system host name, for which I'll set mine to Media Center, and if you're using Wi-Fi, you can set that up here. This page here asks us if we want to start the SSH and Samba services for accessing this machine. Since we're going to be using Jellyfin later, we do need to enable SSH so we can transfer over the Jellyfin repository uh, plugin information. So I'm going to enable this now, and then we can disable it once we're done. Click next and then click next again to accept the thank you screen and then boom, Kodi has been set up. Now let's get Kodi integrated with Jellyfin. Strictly speaking, this is not necessary and once you've gotten Libra Elec installed and Kodi set up, 
you can go import your media libraries from network shares or external drives or wherever you have media stored and then just go on your merry way watching content. But personally, I've got a Jellyfin server set up, so I have an easily accessible central repository for all of my media and Kodi has a plugin to integrate with it. So the LibreLX custom add-on repository does have a Jellyfin plugin, but for whatever reason, it didn't work for me. I don't know if it's actually a client plugin or some sort of server add-on somehow, but anyways, we're going to install the official Jellyfin plugin for Kodi. It's over on the jellyfin.org documentation site, the URL of which is a mouthful, so the link will be in the video description. But once you're there, scroll down to the install add-on repository section, click on the link in step one to download the zip file, and I will meet you over in the command line. Once you're in the terminal, we need to copy over the .zip file to the libre-elect host. To do that, we'll use the SCP tool. Type in SCP space, then the path to the downloaded zip file at download slash repository, yada, 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 space, then our destination. This will be root at IP address of our Libre LX host, and then colon at the very end. Note the colon, which is very important for this command. Hit enter, enter yes if you're prompted to accept the SSH key, and then type in the root user password, which by default is Libre LX, all lowercase. It shouldn't take long to copy over the file and let's get back to Kodi. Now from the main Kodi screen, just go to settings, add-ons, and select install from zip file. You'll get a warning about installing from unknown sources is disabled. Don't worry, just click the settings button, then check the box on the new window that pops up to enable installing from unknown sources. Now just hit escape to go back a screen, click on install from zip file again, and accept the warning that manually installed add-ons won't automatically update. In the new window that pops up, select home folder and then select the repository.zip file. Now that the Jellyfin Kodi repository is installed, go back and this time select install from repository. Then select the Jellyfin Kodi repository, video add-ons, and then you'll have two options here, Jellyfin and Jellycon. The differences of these two are explained very well on the wiki page, but the gist of it is that Jellyfin will sync the media on the Jellyfin server to Cody's local library so that the sections for movies and TV shows and such show up as if it was a native uh, media library. Whereas Jellycon is more of a traditional plugin where you have to go to the Atoms tab, select the Jellyfin add-on, and then you can browse your library that way. Let's go with the Jellyfin plugin since that's what I want to use Cody for. Click on it and then click install. It'll do its thing for a moment or two and then you should get a pop-up window to sign up just like this one. Click manually add server Give it your server address, then sign in when prompted. Now we need to select how Jellyfin will integrate with Kodi, natively where it can directly access media files and bypass Jellyfin completely, or add-on which will pull the media through Jellyfin. The default is add-on and the native direct play thing is a bit more involved to set up, so let's go with the add-on option. If you did this right, you'll get a new window like this to select which libraries to sync. I'm going to select all libraries, click OK, and boom, you can see in the top right corner that things are syncing. At this point, it might take a long time depending on the size of your libraries, but after a while, everything should sync properly and you can start using your Pi to start watching all of your videos, TV shows, movies, or whatever else. All right, so now you should have a Pi set up with LibreLX so you can watch your movies, TV shows, and whatever else you have. And if you went through the whole thing with me, it's even syncing content from Jellyfin. And this setup can be customized and expanded on further with numerous Kodi plugins, which can add support for things like YouTube, Twitch, Netflix, radio stations, you can name it. Pretty much if there's any way of experience or viewing content, there's probably a Kodi plugin for it. And if you don't have the technical know-how or the interest in maintaining and running a server, you also don't even need to set up a Jellyfin instance to watch TV shows or whatever, since you can just mount a local file share or even a USB hard drive and import media that way. Hopefully this was as easy for you as it was for me. It takes a little bit of effort to get up and going, but really isn't all that bad for a very versatile and flexible system like this. It's also really cheap and can be had for around $100 with the Logitech keyboard included. Because it is cheap, has a small footprint, and is really, really low powered, it's also a lot easier to justify a setup like this compared to something like a full-blown HTPC, which will likely suck up a ton more power and have a larger physical size. If you don't need this to play games, that is. 
In that case, a more conventional HTPC would probably be better. Or if you still want to use a Pi, you can install a standard Raspbian image and then install Kodi for media and Steam Link for streaming games from another PC, but that'll be a story for another time. Anyways, that's all I have for this one. And if you didn't like the video, then you know what to do. But if you did like it, then go click the like button, go get subscribed and click the bell icon so you don't miss future videos just like this one. Also feel free to leave your feedback on this video or suggestions for future videos in the comment section below. I am always glad to hear from you all. I've also got a Discord server if you'd like to join the community and hang out and chat or whatever. And there's also several channels to get help with whatever computer problems you might be having. I hope you all have a great day and I will catch you in the next one.